Okay, so let's continue. Now, as I was saying, like every employee has to work on a project and also a project just can be empty. It has to have an employee working on it. Otherwise, what's the point of a whole project, right? So yeah, that's about it for the um, optional, optional and mandatory participation. Now let's move on to this thing that's showing here. Now, you knew that entities have attributes. Now what's with this? Works on also has is hours attribute. What does that mean? What's that supposed to mean? Well, attributes, sorry, relationships can also have uh, attributes because like for example, this hours attribute would not have applied to an employee entity on its own. Like employee has this pro attribute called hours. Now, what would that, what would be the use of that, right? What's the point of all that? Because that hours attribute won't be necessary in the relationships with other stuff and on its own even, what's the point of having hours in a, in an, as an attribute for an employee entity? So that's why this, this hours attribute only comes when this works on relationship is initiated, so established. So when you have hours attribute, it means an employee works on a project for this many hours, for maybe seven hours or something. So that's why the hours attribute came and like is attached to the relationship itself. So relationships also can have attributes. Now there's this really important point, the whole point of ER diagram, like uh, every row in table is differentiated by a key attribute uh, that's a unique attribute that identifies each row uniquely now when you see this underlines beneath uh, under these all these uh, attributes it means that this this attribute like uniquely identifies that one single row or one single row of data so that's why name is a key attribute for department. The department name will be unique for each department. Like there's one department called computer science. There's another department called applied physics. There's another department called um, biology and all that stuff. So that's why each department name is different. And even for employee, every employee has a unique social security number. Everyone has every single citizen has a unique social security number. So that's why that uniquely identifies an employee. All right, and even every project has a unique name or maybe a unique number uh, altogether. So that would uniquely identify each row in a project table. All right, now let's come towards weak attributes. Now you see, you saw a double, double oval shaped, uh, uh, what you call, a double oval shaped attribute now you're seeing this double uh, diamond shaped relationship. What does that denote? Now, every entity does not necessarily have a key attribute. I know this is all really confusing. Even this whole entity and attribute thing will be really confusing and it will get a lot of time to get used to, but you will. Anyway, so every, every like I said, every entity has a key attribute, but it's not the case all the time. Some entities are weak entities. These are strong entities because each row can be uniquely identified uh, by itself. But when some entity does not have any unique attribute, it means it all the rows can't be identified on its own. So that's a weak entity. Here, dependent is a weak entity which has no key attributes. As you can see, there's no underlined attribute. That's why there's no key attribute and that is the reason why the dependent is a weak entity. Now, a weak entity cannot just stay on its own. A weak entity has to be dependent on a strong entity too. So that's why this whole weak, this is the identifying relationship between this weak entity and this strong, strong entity. And what it does is that this broken line that you're seeing, this is a, a what you call, this could be an attribute, but only with the combination with this assistant primary key. Like on its own, this dependent name may be, may, be, may be the same. For example, this dependent name is actually some, uh, suppose it's a child of employee, suppose a children of employee. Now, suppose some employee, some names can be same, right? That's why name can be, can't actually be used to uniquely identify a role. Some, someone's name can be Harry, another one's name can also, another person's name can also be Harry. So you can't just on its own name can't be an identifying, identifying attribute. That is why 
this broken line is actually just a derived attribute of this employee attribute, uh, derived attribute of this employee entity. So SSN and this name together can be the primary key, the key for this dependent entity. Now, dependence, like every every weak entity, like like I said, weak entity is this double a double double rectangle and weak relationship is double uh, diamond. So every weak entity has to be uh, don't don't confuse these with this. This is a multi-valued attribute. This is a double. Uh, what's your, this is a weak entity and this is an identifying relationship that 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 makes a relationship between a, a weak entity and a strong entity. So without this, it, without a strong entity, a weak ent entity cannot really exist. So yeah, that's about it for weak and strong entities. Now let's look at this weird thing over here. So this is actually a recursive relationship. Why is it a recursive relationship? What do you know about recursiveness in programming? It's always like something that points to itself or something that always just one method just keeps on running towards itself. So an employee has this recursive relationship because it points to itself. So an employee can be a supervisor. A supervisor can sup uh, can supervise the supervisees. That's why, and, and and also a supervisor and supervisees, all of these are within an employee entity because, of course, supervisor is also an employee. Supervisees are also employees. So that's why they point to itself, and uh, the relationship is a recursive relationship. All right, so these are like the basics of ER diagram, the the what you call the shapes. I mean the structures and the the shapes of ER diagram. Let's just review the shapes again. So this is an entity. This is a weak entity. This is a relationship, identifying relationship, and attribute. The key attribute. A key attribute is an attribute that uniquely identifies each data in an entity. Uh, or as in case of tables, each row in an ent uh, in a in a relation table, and a multi-valued attribute. Like I said, multi-valued attribute is of an attribute which can have many values in one row. Like for example, um, like I said that before, like uh, every uh, every department can be in many locations. It can't just be in one location. And um, a composite attribute is one with that looks like a tree structure that has many components, and the derived attribute, I didn't show it because it's not that important, but we'll come to it later. And this is total participation, and this is cardinality ratio. This is this is optional participation. A single line is optional, and double line is total participation. And this cardinality ratio denotes that one employee has a relationship with one one employee E1, has a relationship with many employees E2. And yeah. So that's about it for ER diagrams. And later we'll be starting with a problem and solve it. And then we're going to move on to schema diagrams. So I hope you like this video. I hope this is clear to you. I know it can be a really bit, little, little bit messy in the beginning, but I'm sure you'll all cope up with it. And give a thumbs up if you like this video and good luck.